Hi everybody, this is Jessica Carrier with the Joe Davis Conservation Foundation. Thanks again for joining us for another Facebook Live event. Uh, today's topic is oak savannas. We're, before we start our session off, uh, we usually do a raffle at the beginning of our session, but today we're going to draw the name for the raffle at the end of the session. So this week's Facebook Live event is sponsored again by Gabby's Gifts. And Gabby's has generously donated a magnetic message board and a leaf press again. So Gabby's Gifts has uh, donated this and all you have to do is enter into the raffle by commenting or sharing this video. So, uh, so we will draw the name for last week's Facebook Live event raffle at the end of the session. So, uh, but before we start into our Oak Savannah topic, I want to tell you about our Frame Your Family Challenge. So at JDCF, we have made this big frame, photo frame, that will be placed at a JDCF nature preserve throughout the summer. This big frame will be stationed at a preserve for two weeks at a time before it moves on to the next nature preserve. And we challenge you and your family to go out to the nature preserves and take a picture and tag us on Facebook. If you tag us in at least three of the six nature preserves, you and your family will win a JDCF membership. So get out there and take some pictures, visit the nature preserves and enjoy nature. So uh, today's topic is oak savannas. Oak savanna ecosystems are on decline in the Midwest and in Joe Davis County. If you live in the area, you may have noticed the activity on the hillside by Highway 20 and Horseshoe Mound. Uh, today we have with us Steve Barg, the executive director of JDCF, as well as Randy Nywar, the uh, field ecologist for the Illinois Natural History Survey and the Illinois DNR. And they're gonna tell us a little bit about oak savanna ecosystems, what they are and why these restoration projects matter. Thanks, Jess. Um, so yeah, we're here at uh, the new addition to Horseshoe Mound we purchased in 2018. And uh, we call this the Richardson addition to Horseshoe Mound. We quadrupled the size of Horseshoe Mound. And we added this beautiful northern ridge line uh, that we're starting to restore into its historic uh, look and feel uh, the native oak savanna community. Horseshoe Mound is part of a larger complex of lands we call the Galena Gateway Complex. It includes 190 acres here, 180 acres across Highway 20, you know that as Gateway Park. We purchased that and then donated it to the city of Galena. And then down below that is Bueller Preserve, which is the beginning of the 10 mile Galena River Trail. So this is a really important uh, gateway into the city of Galena. It's preserved forever. Thank you all who have helped us uh, do that preservation work and who have helped us out here restoring. We're gonna be talking about that now with Randy Nybor. So Randy, I met you about 12 years ago when you were leading, you were the, the head, the director of the Illinois Natural Areas Inventory Update. And um, you, uh, following up on work, you started as a young field ecologist in the mid 1970s on the first Illinois Natural in Areas Inventory. Tell us about the Illinois Natural Areas Inventory. What was its purpose? And uh, just a bit about the update. Well, the purpose actually was one of George Fell's ideas, yeah. which is cool. Uh, but it was to locate the highest quality remnants of Illinois, the gems of Illinois, the prairies, the forests, woodlands, savannas, wetlands, you name it, uh, that was left in the state and be able to identify those as statewide significant natural areas. So they were something that was there that uh, if, if people like J JDC wanted to purchase areas like this, they could do that, or the state. And of course, back then it was mainly the state and yeah. uh, some of the forest preserves that yeah. did that. So we actually use the Illinois Natural Area Inventory as part of our land preservation criteria. So if it's in the inventory, it moves up in terms of importance of us protecting it, just like this preserve did, because um, we'll talk about, well, you tell us, why was the Illinois Natural Areas Inventory, why did they name this site, Horseshoe Mound, in that inventory? Well, it was a geologic inventory, or natural area, as far as that goes. There were some really nice outcrops. The mound that was called the best example of a driftless area mound in wow. 
up here in Joe Davies County, well, and, and Carroll County too, as far as echoes where the driftless area is. But, uh, you know, the, the high quality dolomite outcrops here, prior, part of that old Silurian plateau that was out here. But uh, uh, that was basically the reason for it being identified. The woodland and stuff that was around was called grade C, which means it's restorable. But uh, that was the basics for it. Yeah. So it, it identified the, the geologic gem it is. Everybody around here knows that. Um, but that it also had grade C sounds like, yeah, it's not so important. But actually grade C, that's important to us because it means there's a remnant community here that we can restore. And that's what we're doing. Exactly. Um, and one of the things that people talk about is, is you know, Northwest Illinois was all forested or primarily forested. And, and why are we removing so many trees? What, what, what's different about this forest, if you want to call it a forest, than, than some of these more dense shaded forests like you see maybe at Mississippi Palisade State Park? Right. Uh, if, first of all, you know, if you were to look at the pre-settlement um, vegetation that was mapped out here back in the 1840s, uh, you would have seen that the early land surveyors would have called anything with a tree growing on it a forest. <laughs> Interesting. So yeah. uh, it was because that's forests were so important back then for developing, you know, for building products and this sort of thing. But um, if you looked at their notes a little closer, you would have seen things like hazel thickets, gnarly trees that were not good for timber, this type of thing. And that told you right then and there that these were probably savannas or, or woodland type situations. And a savanna basically is within the transition zone between the prairies that came in from the west and the forests from the east. Actually, if I were to turn that around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and so there was a mix of both prairie and forest or I won't say forest, but actually tree species that would be found here, so. Great, when, when we were walking in just a few minutes ago, you pointed at the soil and you said, this tells me something. What does the soil here tell you? Yeah. Uh, and why is that important? Well, you look at it, it's a, it's a nice black loam uh, where you've got soil uh, well developed here. And that organic material that came in, in developed in that soil came from basically prairie grasslands that were here as the understory. Um, this may have actually been all prairie at, at a brief period of time, but I kind of doubt it. But uh, the oaks that you see coming in here, the nice bur oaks and that type of thing, uh, they developed well with it. And uh, if this were not have some sort of prairie basis to it, it wouldn't have this nice dark rich color to it. Nice. Yeah, that's that, that was it was a new thing for me to understand. So. Um, fair enough to call a, a, a savanna kind of an open woodland with a prairie prairie underneath it kind of a mess yeah definitely um so uh talk about the invasive species that we're seeing and the removal that we're doing it's um we're taking out a lot of trees and that's freaking a lot of people out when i come out here it's like holy cow what's going on here i, I have that sort of gut feeling why is, why is removing a lot of these invasive species that have moved in so important in this restoration process? Well, first of all, it's going to allow sunlight to come in. That's going to be needed to regrow the, the, the parts of the, the savanna that are missing for right now. But uh, they would shade out almost anything native in the understory. There may be a seed bank still there, but there's obviously going to have to be things restored, uh, additional seedings put in, this sort of thing. So. Those na non-native plants, which we see very common in almost any part of Illinois, the buckthorns, the uh, bush honeysuckle and, and garlic mustards and things like this, you know, they were brought in long time ago because people would bring plants like that when they sure. moved in from Europe. It was one of those situations that reminded them of home and they planted them and because there was no competition for them here. There were, uh, excuse me, there was no competition or no um, uh, diseases. Yes, and, yeah. that, would, that would have stopped them from developing. They've spread just like wildfire in the understories. So, so uh, fire is a missing piece. We talked about that earlier. But um, tell us about, we're taking off a lot of cedars and cedars are native. 
right. they're important. Um, that's been sort of shocking for some people. Why you're removing all the cedars? Aren't they good? And and just leaving the oaks? Well, we're we're not just leaving oaks. We're leaving other native tree species. But tell us why removing the cedars is an important part of this restoration. Well, cedars obviously uh, have a shading effect on the understory too, just like the exotics. And historically, Dad, could you just pan, um, kind of show the cedars? Keep going, Andy. Uh, I just want historically. Uh, they were here, but not in the numbers that you see them in the understory. Uh, it, they were often found along the edges of cliffs, this type of thing, uh, uh, because that's where the fires couldn't reach them and, you know, thin them out, this type of thing. So it was a situation that cleaning the cedars out, you're actually just removing, um, you know, a higher density of those trees that shouldn't be there to begin with. Yeah. and weren't there. Yeah. Um, cedars are uh, prevalent here, um, but the Morton Arboretum tells us that uh, the oak ecosystem, which includes savanna, is one of our most threatened ecosystems in Illinois and indeed in the Midwest. So um, it's important from our restoration work to make sure we're taking care of these oak savannas and allowing them to regenerate. What, what are you seeing here when you walk, walk around? We're just gonna close here and then move on to some questions. But what kind of, what are you seeing in the process here? Are we on track? Is there anything we should be tweaking or? Well, I'm not seeing anything that uh, doesn't surprise me or that sort of thing. It's, it's, like we said, this is the ugly part of the phase of restoration and it's the most shocking phase. And so it's gonna be something that's gonna look like this for a few years. And uh, uh, from what I've read of your management plan with the reintroduction of uh, you know, some of the prairie species and, and woodland species that are in the herbaceous layer down here, um, it, it's gonna take a couple of years to get there, but I think you, you guys have really nailed it as far as getting this structure that you wanna see out here. It is, so. it is beautiful, I have to admit, um, uh, but it's sort of both and, you know, sort of shocking at first and then it you is. see these beautiful trees, open grown trees, and it's it's just gorgeous. You, you, because you're releasing a yeah. lot of things in the understory and a lot of that is things like garlic mustard and that sort of thing. So uh, it, it's going to just take, take a while. And uh, people, if they've seen what you have done across the street at Great a Gateway at you know, wapello, things of this sort, though, though those are basically prairies, uh, that type of flush will come here eventually. You've yeah. just got to be patient. That's the whole thing. It's not like a garden where you harvest the crop the first summer. Yeah. You've got to let it go, and uh, hopefully uh, in three, four, five years it's going to go. Yeah, well, that's that's where we're headed. Um, we'll bring you back in three or four years, and we'll talk about how, how we did. We'll get a grade from you on how we're doing. Um, but um, Randy, I want to thank you for being here. You drove all the way up from Morrison, Illinois. Um, it's great to have someone with your uh, credibility, your stature, um, come out and see, see this um, work that we're doing and affirm what we're doing. That means a lot to us. Um, I also want to thank the volunteers. Um, yeah. Gail, Galena Area Land, um, enthusiasts are out here. Um, they're going to be starting again now as we move into phase three of um, recovery from COVID. Uh, but they put in literally thousands of hours out here. We've had contractors out here. So it definitely is a community-based project where a lot of people are taking pride in this. So we have a sign that we're working on. Um, and I'm just going to show this real quick. Uh, and uh, I, I really like this. Uh, it says Eco ecological restoration in progress. Watch, wait, be amazed. That's where we're heading. That's incredible. Um, we need some patience. Uh, so we're in the waiting period, in the watching and waiting period. But in a year or two we'll, or three, we'll be in the be amazed period. That's our that's our goal, anyways. Well, what will it look like in two or three years? So um, underneath, uh, you'll have a much more. I mean, you're seeing green underneath here but the, what we call the herbaceous layer, there'll be more grasses. What you're seeing in here, there are some natives. We're seeing uh, May apple, we're seeing um, Virginia, Virginia water leaf. Yeah. We've seen uh, some 
what's the species we saw on the, out on the op, outcropping? Oh, the uh, the uh, columbines. The columbines. And, and uh, there's some native goldenrods. Yeah. And, so there's some good things out there. So there is a seed bank here, but a lot of what you're seeing um, is invasive species. So it'll look greener, more lush. Uh, we'll be planting some native shrubs in here, maybe back to some hazelnuts, yeah. which would be cool. Um, and restoring and bringing fire back as a, as a natural disturbance. Um, so it will look nicer, I guess is the best way to say it. Uh, any questions we have from the audience today, Deb? Or? Um, Maureen was asking, is this new area open for hiking? Yeah, so um, the area is not open. Uh, there is a sign um, at the entrance to the restored area that says uh, trail closed. Uh, so we'd w like to wait uh, until about, we think this fall we'll have it in shape enough to have uh, visitors come out and walk this trail. So just a few more months uh, towards the end of the growing season and certainly next spring and summer. Uh, you'll be out here and enjoying it. It's beautiful, the, the views are stunning, the rock outcroppings are just crazy cool. Um, yeah, you'll, you'll like it. Uh, Joan Klaus is asking, will the sign you just showed be on Highway 20? Yeah, I wish we could. Um, we, we, uh, it's, that's a tough thing. We have to get permission from the state to put up signs like that. And for someone to read it going 45 to 50 miles an hour, it would have to be gigantor, so no. <laughs> um, but we will be uh, writing more articles in the Gazette and in our newsletter to let people know what we're doing. And the signs will be posted at the entrance where it says trail closed. So people know what we're doing. Yeah. All right. I think I'm going to turn it back over. Thanks again, Randy. We really well, appreciate you being here. It's always great to be up here, Steve. And, and you've got a great crew. And there's no other place around up here that I'd rather be is on in Joe Davies County and on your property. So. Oh, thanks, Randy. So. That's that's nice to hear. Um, come back anytime. Yeah, I, I will. think you're bringing your grandkids here in a couple of weeks. You said. Yep, I think so. Um, all right, I'm going to turn it back over to Jess for the raffle drawing. Thanks, everybody. And remember, if you guys have more questions, you can keep typing them in, and we can answer those questions even after the video is finished. Okay, so let's do the drawing for last week's raffle. And the raffle item last week was a uh, little bug cage and bubbles and um, a couple other fun little, uh, like a kid exploring kit to go outdoors with the kids. Okay, so let's see. Last week's winner is Andrew Novak. Yay, Andy! Yay. <laughs> so, Andy, if you're watching, we will get a hold of you on Facebook to figure out how to get this gift to you. And remember, this week's Facebook Live event was sponsored by Gabby's Gifts again, and all you have to do to get entered into the raffle is comment or share this Facebook Live video. So thanks again for joining us for the Oak Savannah conversation with Randy Nybor and Steve Barr. So join us again next week.